Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. This week is a travel news special. I'll be covering topics such as Trump's ban of people from certain countries, a cruise website that can help you get discounts, which they claim is up to 65%, a new hotel, changes at Heathrow, changes at Glasgow, which might catch you out, and an airline that's just thinking of ditching the uh, back-of-the-seat monitors for in-flight entertainment. So you might have to bring your own entertainment on board. All that's coming up in the uh, travel show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. I believe that at the moment it's against the law to have a news programme without mentioning Donald Trump. So let's get him out of the way. Apparently, UK holiday makers are turning their backs on the USA as a potential holiday destination due to the new Trump administration. And this is according to new data released by the, uh, the website Cheap Flights. The managing director of Cheap Flights, Andrew Shelton, said, On the face of it, our data suggests Brits are voicing the disapproval of the president with their clicks. Since Trump took office, we've seen a 15% drop in searches for travel to the US and both the confusion over the weekend's announcements about travel restrictions and media coverage of the reaction could stoke that uncertainty further. He went on to say, It's too early to point to a Trump slump. We know it takes a lot to knock bricks off their desire to travel, but they are fickle. If this trend continues, then the US tourism authorities shouldn't necessarily presume Brits will be thinking America first when it comes to their holiday plans this year with quite the same certainty as they have in the past. And continuing on with uh, the Trump story, a serendip- serendipity tailor-made has temporarily stopped selling flights to the US uh, on US airlines to Canada, the Caribbean and Latin America. The director of the company said that the operator had already decided to postpone the launch of a US program prior to President uh, Trump announcing his 120-day ban on nationals from seven Muslim-majority uh, countries. The UK Foreign Office has since declared that the ban will not apply to British passport holders, including those born in the countries affected or dual passport holders. However, the Director of Serendipity uh, said the announcement from the Foreign Office did not provide enough reassurance for his his old Muslim clientele. As a result, the uh, tour operator stopped selling flights on American Airlines, United, Continental and I'll say to the Caribbean, Canada and Latin America. Instead, it's going to be using British Airways, Virgin Atlantic and Air Canada. The director insisted the company wasn't trying to penalise US industry, uh, travel industry, but added, We have to ensure our clients would feel comfortable travelling to you, the US, and at this moment is the highest level of concern since 9-11. The company decided to postpone its launch of its US City Breaks uh, tour after... Uh, Trump mooted a a Muslim travel ban during his campaign in early 2016. Also, on the uh, ban of people travelling to the US, the international airline body, IATA, or IATA, has asked for clarification from the US regarding the temporary travel ban. In its statement, it said, The executive order was issued without prior coordination or warning, causing confusion amongst both airlines and travellers. It also placed additional burdens on airlines to comply with unclear requirements, to bear implementation costs and to face potential penalties for non-compliance. And speaking of airlines having problems with the executive order from Donald Trump, the world's largest long-haul carrier has had to change pilot and flight attendant rosters for the flights to the US because of the announcement by Donald Trump. The airline is Emirates, which flies daily to 11 US cities and the spokesperson said it has made the necessary adjustments to our crewing to comply with the latest requirements. An independent aviation consultant, John Strickland, said, I cannot think of anything comparable. This brings a mix of administrative confusion, impact and uncertainty for many travellers, as well as practical operation headaches and complexities for airlines in planning their flight programmes. So this ban on travelling applies to pilots and flight attendants from the seven countries. And even though all flight crew who are not US citizens already need a special visa in the country, they will still be banned. 
A spokesperson for Lufthansa, the German airline, said it was too early to comment on the effects of the order, but airlines and passengers should, uh, were required to follow the new rules. Also from the Emirates, the, a spokesperson said the impact on the ban on operations would be minimal. The airline employs over 23,000 flight attendants and around 4,000 pilots from around the world, including the US, Europe and the Middle East. Etihad Airways, their spokesperson, uh, the airline's based in Abu Dhabi, said that the airline had taken steps to ensure there would be no issues for flights departing on the coming weeks. But with all the confusion enforcing the ban, it's unclear if the ban applies to dual nationals who have well, hold one passport in one country on the list and another from a non-US country that does not. And we've had Boris Donchon say that those who hold a UK passport are not affected by the ban, but uh, who knows about other countries. Has Donald Trump put you off going to the USA this year? Are you concerned about getting on a flight and finding out you won't be allowed on because of where you're from or what you believe? Please share your thoughts with me at facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. You're listening to The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. There only seems to be a few ways you can pay for your holiday. You can go to a travel agent and give them a cash check, if you're lucky, if they still take checks, debit card or credit card. But there's another company out there that can help people pay for their holiday. It's, the company's called Fly Now, Pay Later, and it's a finance providing company, and it's signed an agreement to offer its credit payment plan service to an online portal and travel agent. The credit plan provider has signed with Morsan Group, the owner of uh, Crystal Travel and agency Travel Centre UK, which is going to offer instant credit and pre-departure payment plans to customers. In addition to these platforms, Fly Now Pay Later service is also integrated over the next weeks, the next few weeks, into a number of uh, other travel groups, including Tour Centre, uh, Mahu Bay Travel, Sam Travel, and World Airfares. The service from the company allows consumers to spread the cost of their booking over 2 to 10 monthly instalments, paying a one-off transaction fee at the time of booking. It also offers additional consumer protection in the event of financial uh, failure by a travel provider. Its new pre-departure payment plan allows consumers to spread the cost, as I said, and the payments can be bi-monthly as well bi-weekly as well as monthly and it allows customers to lock in the price of their travel arrangement or flight as early as possible. For the first time in the travel industry payment plans allow small and medium sized travel brands to roll out their own pay monthly option and compete with the payment terms offered by larger tour operators using fly now pay later's uh, solution without the need of worrying about chasing consumer payments or being exposed to credit risk. The company, uh, Fly Now Pay Later, has already partnered with Travel Pack, Carbon, uh, Carlton Leisure, Benz Travel and 360 Travel Group. I have tried to see if I can get somebody from uh, Fly Now Pay Later to come onto the show to explain their service and their consumer protection because their website doesn't really tell you much and I'm waiting for them to confirm. So if you have any questions about consumer credit when it comes to booking a holiday, please do send them to me at facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. And if somebody from this credit providing company does come on, I can ask them the questions. A High Court challenge against the government's approval of a third runway at Heathrow Airport has been thrown out by a judge. Those against the plans had called for a judicial review, which they hoped would declare the government's decision as unlawful. This group of campaigners included the Hillenden, Richmond, Wandsworth and Windsor and Maidenhead uh, councils claimed there was a failure to consult before it abandoned a previous promise that the third runway would never be built. The people who avoided uh, abandoned a previous promise was the government. It also argued that ministers fail, failed to recognise unlawful air quality impacts. But the judge, Lord Justice Cranston, struck out the case on the basis that the court had no jurisdiction against the claim, and this was according to a report at Sky News. Lawyers for the Transport Secretary had argued that a judicial review could not be proceed in law as the case could not be heard until after the consultation on the National Policy Statement on Aviation, which is expected to be published later this year. The judge said once the Secretary of State adopts and publishes the uh, National Policy Statement, the court will have the jurisdiction to entertain the challenges the claimants advance. 
And because of this, this, uh, this claim must now be struck out. But councils involved in the case accused the government of putting off the inevitable, inevitable and campaigners have vowed to continue the fight of the third runway, which they say won't pass legal tests on air quality. I'm actually investigating air quality at the moment as a uh, news feature. If you live near a runway and you're worried about the smells that are coming your way from the, the fuel or the exhaust from the jet engines, please do contact me at facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show and I can look into the information and your concerns and put it to pull forward to this uh, feature, which the way things are going is probably going to be coming out sometime in March. But sticking with Heathrow, uh, ministers are expected to publish pr- proposals for a major increase in flights from Heathrow this week in a move to set to kick long, sorry, kickstart a year long, a year long parliamentary process. We just mentioned about a national policy statement. Uh, this one, drawn up by the Department of Transport, will set out the impact of the three and a half kilometre runway, and w- what the impact will be on the community, as well as tough planning conditions attached to the plans. It's expected to cap flights from Heathrow at 740,000 takeoff and landings a year, which is a 50% increase on the present limit, as well as banning night flights for a six and a half hour period. This is according to a report in the Times. The policy statement is likely to be published by the time you heard this, so I might be talking about it more next week. I will outline plans for the compulsory purchase of almost 800 homes around the the airport, giving owners 125% of their value plus cost. It is also expected to rule out a fourth runway. This expansion will be subject to a four-month public consultation and will ultimately be put to a vote of MPs, probably by the end of 2017, or perhaps none of the way things slip, sometime in 2018. Then Heathrow will submit his own detailed planning application. If you're going abroad by plane, boat, or the family car. If you're going abroad for pleasure, or business. There's one essential thing to do before you go. Check the expiry date on your European health insurance card. You can renew it up to six months before it expires. Visit nhs.uk slash healthcareabroad or call 0845 606 2030. Bon voyage! You can follow me on Twitter at holiday underscore hut. Yotel, uh, Y-O-T-E-L, I'm never sure how to pronounce this hotel chain, but anyway, the cabin style hotel chain is to set its first property, in, open its first property in central London. And this will be the... F-